Hi, friend Jim got here today, this morning on the morning flight, and he's all ready to work inspecting the airplane. He's the IA in charge of everything here, so he's taking a look at everything, make sure I did everything right. Let's we'll see if we can't get this thing signed off and ready to fly. So, Jim's been looking the airplane over, and he's pretty happy so far with what he's seen. We did find one thing that I forgot, and that was to tighten up those lock nuts on the forks on the wing struts there where they attach to the fuselage. Yeah, I was waiting until he got here until we made sure the wings were all rigged properly. Anyway, so far so good. That was the only squawk that he's come up with so far. Oh, we got a little bit of an oil leak in one of the oil lines coming from the oil cooler too. So, so far so good. I've started putting the fuel covers on, fuel tank covers on, and the wing root covers on. Oh, I don't know what I did with the uh, weather stripping i've got some a rubber gasket or rubber seal to go on that one that goes around the windshield there i've got a new rubber seal for that let's see if i can't find that to, that's got to be glued onto that fairing anyway we're coming along slowly but surely jim's health is not real good so he can't get around very good and he's not very fast but he is a good mechanic and a good inspector so well mechanics all finished with his inspection Everything looked pretty good, he said. The only fault that I had was those not tightening up those nuts on the strut forks. But everything else, he says, looked pretty good. So I'm starting to put everything together now. I've got the left-hand fuel tank cover put on and the left-hand wing fairings put on. Well, that's all on there and it fit back up. So that was good. Now I'll start working on the right side and get that fuel tank cover set up on there and get that fairing on that right side. And then we can put the inspection covers on the tail back there and I think we're done. Well, the mechanic looked the airplane all over, inspected every little nook and cranny, and checked everything out real close. I double-checked the rigging back there on the horizontal stabilizer, and that's just about perfect. So I went ahead and tightened the lock nuts up on those flying wires. He said those were fine, too. I put the wing root fairings on. That took a little bit more fitting than I'd hope. It fits up pretty close, but it's always hard to get something that's already got holes in it and stuff fitted up to something that's new. But it's all up there, and it all fits up pretty good now. I went back to the tail and put on the inspection covers back there on the horizontal stabilizer, and back underneath there in the tail of the airplane, got those all fitted up, and got the uh, inspection cover back on and the, out here on the wing by the uh, strut where the pulley is for the aileron cable, and put on uh, inspection cover there where the flap cable comes out, where that turnbuckle was. I went ahead and safety wired that the other day when I found out that Jim's helper wasn't going to come up right away. Anyway, the airplane is all good to go. He waved his scepter over it and, and gave it his blessing, and the airplane is all good to go. He was really happy with it. Uh, the only thing we have left to do now is to finish the paperwork and get it in the water. When I took this airplane out of the water the last time, we run into the state trooper and he wasn't very happy with us for taking it out and a wide load and stuff and he didn't give me a ticket but he did give me a warning and asked me to get license and lights on the trailer we had temporary lights on the trailer but he didn't like that i've been working on that i got the uh, lights on the trailer and got those working and i was working on getting the license plates for it uh, it's a homemade trailer so we had to go through some stuff on that had to make out special paperwork for it, take it in and see what they needed. Then we had to get the trailer inspected. So I took it in to get it inspected with the lights on it. And then there's supposed to be a weigh ticket for it. And the only place to get it weighed here is up at the city dump. By the time I went into town to get the inspection done, they were already closed. They're only open from noon till 3 in the afternoon. And the DMV is only open on Mondays and Tuesdays. So I can't do anything with it now until Monday. I could go get it weighed, but I can't get the license till Monday. We've only got two miles to go on the highway out here. Go a little less than two miles down the highway and half a mile down on another road down to get it launched. So nobody's ever had me get a license or do anything like that before. I've asked, tried to get the police involved in it and the trooper and a bunch of other people involved in it before and the probably 15 or 20 times we pulled this airplane out of the water 
and everybody said just go ahead and do it so this is the first time we've run into that but usually I take it down to launch it early in the morning at first light and in the springtime that's not too bad we can get it about four o'clock or four thirty in the morning but we've gone now to where we're on the back swing of the daylight so I don't know what time it gets light now but it's supposed to be foggy the next few mornings so uh, the mechanic was really happy with everything he he uh, looked everything over real close he's been involved in it and give me an inspection on the airframe before I put the cover on it but he's had some medical problems and hasn't been able to come up and look at it since then that was one of the reasons I was doing the videos is to get everything on there to, so he could see what was going on and he said when he come and looked at it he was really happy with it so ah it makes me happy too now the airplane is officially finished now the mechanic had his way with it he looked it all over inspected it checked everything out waved his scepter over it sprinkled it with holy water declared it officially airworthy we got the log books signed off still got to finish up with the stcs and the 337s getting those uh, turned in but the airplane is officially finished and legal to fly but I went to town, talked to my boss to see if I still had a job, and I don't have a job anymore for it. So there was no reason to put it in the water. The fuselage has never been in the water, never been used. Horizontal stabilizer, elevator, rudders are all virgin. They've never been in the salt water. The floats have never been in the salt water. So taking it out and putting it in now just to check it out would uh, spoil all that. It has a lot more value with everything not being in the salt water trying to decide what to do with it. I figured I'd put it on the trailer, take it out, and do a run-up on the engine where I could do a full run-up on it, which I can't do in the hangar. And take some pictures of it in the sunshine and put it up for sale. So I took the center door off and stuck it over out of the way and was going to get ready to open it up, but I kind of got corked. My son is fixing up the skiff so he could go over and put his moose camp together and put it up, and he took the skiff out to do a test run on it. Drug it back crippled. The wheel bearings went out on it, so he brought it up the driveway and dumped it right in the middle of the driveway until he'd get the wheel bearing fixed on it. Oh, I couldn't get around it with any of the machinery or anything and didn't have a place to bring the airplane out to. So anyway, we didn't get it out of there. So I've kind of changed my mind now. I think I'm just going to leave it in there for now. It's the wrong time of the year to put a float plane up for sale anyway. So I'm just going to leave it in the hangar here. Go ahead and seal it up, pickle it, let it sit for the winter, and then we'll figure out what to do with it next spring. Well, meanwhile, the weather has changed and it's pouring down rain, and so I've got to figure out what to do next. I spent a couple days pouting, and now I need to get off my butt and get busy and get stuff done again. I need to get the sawmill going so I can mill up these logs that I got so that I can start working on the house again and finish up that porch that I started last winter. Like I said, i got to quit pouting and get to work. I want to get the engine in the airplane pickled up and covered back up and put away, put the door back on there. So the airplane project is all finished now, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. We'll figure it out next spring, whether I put it up for sale or what. Can't afford to fly it. $900 a month on Social Security just doesn't go far enough to support an airplane habit. Since I'm not going to fly the plane this season, I'm going to get it ready for the winter, kind of pickle it. I've got new cylinders on there now, and I had the assembly lube and stuff on everything coated real well. Lube played in on the cam and everything, so it should be okay, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of set it up for storage anyway. What I did was I put some cam guard in there. This is a little, I don't know what that is, a pint, 16 ounces, added to the oil. Put that in the oil and then run it up. I didn't run it up, I just ran it for a while to make sure it got thoroughly mixed in there and got all over everything. It's supposed to get in there on the cam and stick on there, help prevent cam and lifter wear. So that's put in, that should help the cam. Once it cools off a little bit, I'm going to pull the spark plugs out and put these in. They're desiccate crystals, uh, silica desiccate, in a little cartridge that screws right into the spark plug sockets. And I have these four. I have four more in a jar over here. I'll get those put in there and put the spark plugs away. Usually I put trouble light in there in the cowling inside on the engine with a 
60 or 100 watt light bulb in there, but you can't buy incandescent light bulbs anymore. So I got some of these little heaters here. This is a 50 watt ceramic heater, and that just uh, screws into a regular bulb socket. I've got some 100 watt ones too, but I want to just put enough heat in there just to keep it dry. And then I'll put the engine cowling cover over that, which will hold the heat in. And put a uh, heat lamp underneath the instrument panel before I uh, put a heater in the back seat before something to keep the dampness out of there and the instrument panel and the upholstery and stuff but I found these little they're 500 watt electric heaters in there I got these off of Amazon they were 16 bucks a piece for the blue ones and then they had uh, orange ones or red ones or something else for 19 bucks a piece I don't see where the color makes any difference on them, so I just got the blue ones. They've got a little switch right here that shuts it off in case it tips over or anything, so it's got to be sitting flat on the floor to work. I did find some 250 watt ones, which would have been better, I think. It doesn't take much. You just want a little bit of warm air circulate in there to keep the dampness down. But the 250 watt ones didn't have a fan in it, and this one has a fan in it, so that will keep the air circulating and moving. So that's what we'll do now is get this this thing set up for sitting here for the winter. One other thing that I'm going to do is take the battery out and I'll set it over here and put it on the charger. I always like to take my batteries out of my equipment and stuff when I, in the winter time when I'm not using them and charge them up. Some people like to put a charger, even a trickle charger or something on their batteries when they leave them. I don't like to do that. I've seen too many batteries blow up and burn up, catch on fire. I use that battery quite a bit for turning that engine over to get the oil pressure up and to check things out on it. And then started it three or four times and never did run it enough to get it charged back up with the alternator in the airplane. So is it good to put it on the battery charger and get it topped off? I feel good about it being out here on the floor and not in the airplane over the winter and fully charged. Like I said, I like to get all my batteries out. Get them fully charged before they go in the winter. If they're fully charged, there's usually no problem with them over the winter, but if they don't have a full charge in them when it gets really cold, they can freeze and break. And I don't mind charging them up, putting a charger on them for a little while in the airplane or in the machinery, but I don't like leaving a trickle charger on them full time while they're in there in the airplane especially. I've seen more than once where the batteries blew up and I've seen a couple times where they caught on fire and burned up, burned up the piece of equipment they were in. So this is what I've done with the heater, set it in there on the seat. I originally had it sitting there on the floor just in front of the seat up underneath the instrument panel but I got to thinking I don't know whether that heater has a shut off on it or anything like that, a thermostat on it or anything like that and if it's just on all the time it may get the floor hot there in front of it. Uh, eventually that stuff, sometimes if you have heat on it long enough, it'll get hot and char and, and uh, even start a fire on the wood. So I got to thinking about that, decided to set it here on the seat. And then the same thought went through my mind that if it's sitting there on that seat, it could uh, blister that paint and maybe get it hot. So I got a piece of cement board and then set that heater on that. It should be okay, but just to make sure it'll be okay, I've got it setting like that. So that should, it's blowing, it's working. The heat coming out of it is not very much. You can hold your hand on the front of it. Probably no problem with it, but just to make sure that there's not, it's going to be in here unattended. And the last thing we want is to fire or anything like that. I've got the cushion set back there on the back seat and that should keep them from absorbing too much moisture and getting mildewy or anything. So I'm going to close this up now, close this uh, door back up and everything, close that area in and that should work pretty good. This is what I've got here, that's my uh, treble light, my automotive treble light and I've got that little ceramic heater unit in there and I've just got it set in underneath the cowling there. I've got it well away from anything that could uh, burn and so it's kind of directed up on the sump around the oil. I got it up off the cowling on the bottom and routed the cable out through the cowling so that it could go out to where it plugs in. Now I've taken out the spark plugs on the right side here and put these desiccate crystals in there. 
And this is what they look like. You see they look something like a spark plug. They just have a plastic housing and they've got a screen inside of them there and they're full of the silico crystals. I went ahead and put them on all four, uh, all four spark plug holes here on this right side and I'll do the same thing on the left side. I'll take out all the spark plugs and put these in all four holes, uh, all four cylinders. They come in kits of four, so like on a four-cylinder engine you could just take out the, either the top or the bottom plugs or whatever and, and uh, put them in there and they just thread right in the spark plug hole. They have a, a neoprene or rubber gasket on the bottom of them so you just screw them in finger tight until they seal up. I just stick these in the oven at uh, about 110 degrees or so, whatever the lowest setting I can get on the oven to run and leave them in there for a couple of days to uh, dry out. That silicone just silica just recharges itself. But I got to looking at these and they're actually threaded in there so you can actually unscrew that top portion of that chamber and dump that gel out of there and refresh it with new stuff or dump the gel out of there and and uh, cook it until you cook the moisture out of it. Uh, I put the engine ca cover on over the cowling. That's a 185 engine cover. I have a Super Cub engine cover, but it won't fit on this airplane because this 180 horse engine is a wider deck than the 150 horse engine or the standard Super Cub. But that 185 cover fits over there pretty good. That covers up everything pretty tight. So the airplane is all set up for a long winter's nap now. All done with it till next spring sometime.